So first, let's start by downloading all the software and tools we'll need to get started. Links are all in the description box below, but you can also Google these. So let's first of all download Blender, Windows installer, and you guys know the drill. You can install it anywhere you like. I like installing my version of Blender inside the X-Plane folder. Then let's download MLCAD. This is the CAD software for Legos. And there's instructions here on how to download and install. And once that's downloaded and installed, I also recommend creating a shortcut on the taskbar here. Then we're going to go over here and download a plugin for Blender, Import LDraw. And this has to be installed after the library file from this installer has been successfully installed. So decide on where you want to install these resources. These are basically Lego blocks and assembled kits that you'll have access to once these programs are installed. And this is from a GitHub repository. It adds functionality to Blender. You just download the zip file and I'll show you how to install that into Blender once we get there. And then the x to Blender, the latest release is an alpha, and this is not completely mature software yet. There's still a lot of changes that are being done, but I've uh, used it over the past couple of weeks and it seems pretty usable. So the first thing I'll do is I'll showcase how to install this stuff into Blender. Now Blender has an all new interface since version 2.8, and some things function a little bit differently. Now when you wanna install an add-on package, you can actually go here, click install, and browse to your downloaded files and just look for the zip file you downloaded. Here's the latest LDRAW master I just downloaded today. And all I have to do is say install add-on. And then we have to find it. We can use the search bar to find it, LDRAW. And then we simply have to enable it here. Now the next one we wanna install is Xplane to Blender. Again, I head to my internet downloads and type in Xplane without a dash and I go to date modified. Today, this is the latest version of Xplane to Blender. So I click on this, I have to clear my search here. I'll do a new search for X-Plane, this time with a dash, and then I just enable it here. And with this installed, you're already starting to see we have some X-Plane preferences that were added to uh, the interface, and we'll go through this as time goes on, setting things up correctly. But for now, just to show how this would work, I've already built the sample plane out of Legos, and let's just try to import it from here. And here you can see this is an LDR file, which is a Lego type file. We just click like this. But next, we're actually gonna focus on the MLCAD software, and I'm gonna walk you through how to make this plane in MLCAD. So after we start a new session here, we wanna organize our workspace a little bit so that we can fit in the instructions and the parts list and instructions page one and page two, which have links in the description below. And set yourself up so that you can comfortably see these four quadrants here and the parts list that'll populate here. You can actually also move these things around in order to be a little more space efficient. And the concept behind this layout is that this contains a database of all the Lego parts that are available in every kit. Here's a little preview of the part you've got selected here, but you can also right click on here and just add the part directly into your workspace. So I have done this before. So we'll start by following these instructions and looking for this part in the parts list. So the first one is a six by two white flat plate. And that one is number 3795. I add it using right click and part, and then I just punch in 3795 into the window, hit enter, and it gives me this part. So I can color it white here. I can also color it transparent colors. Let's say I want it to be light blue and transparent. Then I can just click on more here. Under custom, I can select a transparent color. So this is gonna become relevant later on when we have transparent parts like the windows here. But for now, let's just color it white. And then let me just show you how you can move this part around. First thing we need to do is we need to rotate it to be vertical down here in this top view window. I can do that by pressing A or by using this set of tools up here that have a rotate icon on here. So I can rotate it on any axis and I can also move it around. Now the move features are if you go left arrow and right arrow, you can move the part left and right. This is actually gonna end up being from the back. So these movements will match left and right as the left and right arrow keys are pressed. Then forward and backwards is using the up and down key, or you can use these here. And then up and down is using the home key and the end key. And once you have more parts accumulated here, you can actually scroll through the parts by going page up and page down. Now to get this model started out in the right orientation and location, I actually want to have the positional data here show 40, 40, and minus 10. So first I'm gonna go 40. So that's offset to the side a little bit. And then 40 
in the down direction, and then minus 10, that's the down arrow. So this will just ensure that once we import the plane into Blender, it's going to have the correct location for the future steps that we're going to be taking. I want the center of gravity of the plane to match sort of the center of the plane. So this is the position we need to start out with. Okay, so then it's just a matter of going in and adding the parts that we need. There's a uh, four by one flat plate here, part number 3710, add part 3710. And then we use A to rotate it and we use home to nudge it up and the up arrow key to nudge it into place. We need to have a four by four square sticking out on top here. So we have that. Now we go to the next part. It's a blue two by two square, which is part number 3022. 3022. We nudge it backwards and we change the color to blue. Next, we have two one by ones and two slanted three by twos that are tall. We nudge it up and then I nudge it to the left. I paint it white. I make a duplicate of it. And if you go here, you can say duplicate and notice there's a control D listed as a shortcut for this. So I'm going to duplicate it first with this list. And then later on, I'm going to use a shortcut for it and I'm going to move it over to the other side. We see that these two are not aligned with the four by one here. So what I can do is I can select this one and shift select that one. And now I can move this forward using the up arrow key. The next one we want in here is 3298. Now we rotate it with A, move it down with a down arrow key. Then we want to duplicate it to the other side. So I hit control D, left arrow key, A, and nudge it into position. So here now we have a 3D view of the part that is fairly assembled already. So let's line it up to the view so that we can continue matching this view roughly with the instruction set. I do that by just clicking and dragging the mouse around. At this point, I'm actually going to speed up the video because it's not necessary for you to follow me step by step. You can slow the video down if you want. This part here actually has stickers on it. And in the end, we don't really care about having stickers on the raw model. We're going to actually be adding a real cockpit object later on with animated instruments. So we can leave these special blocks out that have painted or stickered parts on it. And for this last part, the propeller is actually not quite aligned with the uh, knob there. This setting puts it a little bit too high. This setting puts it a little bit too low. So we need a finer grid. You can actually adjust that here by going to grid and say medium or F10. So then if you go down here, it snaps right into place there. So then you duplicate that one and move it over to the other side of the plane. Well, it looks like I have to issue a correction. Uh, these numbers here, 40, 40, and minus 10, turns out the first 40 here actually needs to be a zero, but that can be corrected, and I thought I'd showcase how to do that. So you can go here, edit, select all, and then you can just tap the left arrow key four times, and that brought the whole unit into lateral alignment. And once you've finished putting the whole plane together, you can go ahead and save as solo trainer, and I had this one previously saved already, so I'm just going to save it over top of that old directory. Now you can open up this plane in a viewer. You find it in the place that you saved it, double click on it, and it should open up in this 3D viewer. And it allows you to see if you've misplaced anything or if there's anything wrong with the model. So this is a good idea to check before you actually import it into Blender. It looks good to me, so in the next tutorial I'm going to start the process of importing this plane into Blender.